y'all can see from the title what this video is gonna be about because I, I feel like i already know what i'm gonna title this video so let's just get into it before we do like the video leave anything in the comments leave a chicken you know that's our thing and make sure you are subscribed i'm gonna go back to like 2019 when i was working at the call center this was like my last year i started working there like the year before i worked there like almost a year in three months i want to say i'm gonna have to skip over all the call center drama just to get straight to this point at this time i'm living on the north side of texas um, not texas <laughs> at this time i'm living on the north side of houston and i'm working at a call center I'm paying all the bills by myself and me and my ex's relationship was strained. My ex I called Dre. I'm living paycheck to paycheck with no help and everything was just taking a toll on me. So eventually, not even eventually, like around this time, my lease is about to be up and I have like... Okay, I'm gonna explain it like this because I don't want to confuse y'all. Basically, I was told I had 30 days to let them know whether or not I wanted to renew my lease. In actuality, I had to tell them 60 days before. So, with that being said, they had to charge me an extra month, which would then make my lease month to month, which was gonna be like a thousand dollars. Because I didn't tell the office that I wanted to cancel my lease in time, right? So, I was, um, I was living in a, what is it called? Not rent restricted, it's like rent controlled or something rent restricted really so my rent was like almost eight hundred dollars and for the month to month that's almost a thousand dollars i know that's only probably like a 200 and something almost 300 dollars difference when you add it up but that's a big jump for me and that's extra money i could have had in my pocket and whole time i'm not even knowing that i'm gonna get fired from the call center so i remember this one particular weekend and i'm gonna mention this again obviously when i get into my call center story times but this is just the end of it mind you i was cool with like not my manager what can i call the girl i'm gonna just i called her cc because i got other story times about her i called the girl cc so cc worked for the temp agency that i got hired for for the call center long story short i feel like cc was playing games because when you lose your job you supposed to know that friday you're not supposed to call nobody on sunday and tell them like yeah don't go back to your job tomorrow right your assignment so i'm like okay she called me on a sunday like i just said and told me that my whole world was like low-key shattered because i'm like i'm the one taking care of everything i'm the one doing this that and the third and i didn't know what to do at the same time it came at perfect timing because my ex just had won thirty thousand dollars or did he win it like that night either he won it that night or the night after it was like a relief he had won over 30k doing them sports bets y'all he was sports betting before that shit became popular my ears just came on y'all be all right i feel like y'all still gonna be able to hear so mind you before he won this money paycheck to paycheck the funds was tight they were tight so low and no you know what let me let me slow down i said that to say our relationship was very rocky but i didn't have like an issue for real with him like cheating for at least like or not even cheating because y'all when i say cheating i mean you texted somebody you being a little too extra friendly if you know if you doing something behind my back that you wouldn't do in front of me that's considered cheating to me so yeah i didn't have to really worry about him um <clears throat> cheating i guess because i felt like he was living off of me and he was like walking on eggshells in that aspect so i wasn't really worried about that it was just like now i feel like you a bum like okay you're not doing all that extra stuff but now i don't even respect you as a man that's how it was but after he won that money oh he's the type that when he come up on funds he don't know how to act he show his ass so it was like yeah now i gotta hit this flight I gotta do this, that, and the third. I gotta go here, there, everywhere. Cause you up now. You won't even let the money settle in your account. You wouldn't even take me to Vegas. I mean, not Vegas, Louisiana to the casino. Like what? So now you all up now, all of a sudden you trying to catch flights. So lo and be, I mean, not lo and behold, <laughs> just so happened. After he won that money, he had to check a trip to Cali. Huh? He had to take a trip to Cali to get some tree, right? But the thing is he picked a fight with me. He picked a fight with me because he was moving weird. So he had took my car all day talking about, yeah, he going to donate plasma and make some moves in this and the third. But I'm like, you up. So why are you still donating plasma? He like, man, the money not, the money ain't been cleared in my account. Like, that's just that. Like, I got to still make these same moves and da, 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 da. So I'm like, I could have sworn you said, like, it's like he wasn't remembering his lies. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you make it. You was donating plasma and this, that, and the third, but he was just being real weird that night. I mean, that whole day in that night. So when he came home, his phone was going off and it was around three o'clock in the morning. So I'm like, I know my eyes, my ears don't deceive me, bitch. I know your phone not going off. 
at 3 a.m. After you been acting weird as shit all day, I woke his ass up. You ain't finna sleep peacefully while your phone ding a ring a ding off the phone, off the line. <laughs> so I woke him up. He just, man, I got a flight in the morning. I don't got time for this, da da da. It's 3 a.m. It's 3 a.m. I feel like early as fuck, right? His flight was early. Okay, so get up now. Get up now. Let's argue while you pack your bag. My mistake. I meant he had to go catch a Greyhound because he was catching his flight out of Dallas. So he needed to be up early to catch that bus. Mind you, I was trying to get into his phone, but he had changed the password. And mind you, I'm sorry, two mind you's in one sentence is crazy. But I didn't have like no reason to suspect anything. Like, you know, him talking to other people at this, that, and the third. So I didn't really care about his password at the time. Girl, I ain't sleep a wink trying to get up in that phone, but I never did. So just off of that, like, I'm gonna make your trip miserable. Yeah, so I'm blowing up his phone, texting him. He finally get there and I'm just blowing up his phone until he answered and he was like calling me. He was started talking crazy to me, like calling me a stalker because I'm stalking his Snapchat. Oh, that's right. You know what I would do when he was, I would wait till he got on the plane and then I would like log into his Snapchat because Obviously, when you get on Snapchat, two people can't be logged in at once, so it'll log you out. So I'll wait till he was on a plane, had no signal, no service, go through it for a few hours, and then he would like realize a few hours after he landed, or maybe even the next day, and we would get into it. So that's what I did. So he was calling me a stalker, talking to me crazy, telling me I'm making his life miserable. He trying to make moves, and I want to bitch him on on the phone. He can't be doing all that. You distract. I'm distracting him. If he get locked up, then it's my fault because I'm distracting him. He kept answering, 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 hang up in my face, answer, hang up in my face. Answer, argue, hang up in my face. That's how it went. So I'm like, oh, you want to argue. So I'm gonna keep calling. Like I was very, ugh. Y'all know what? I wanna take that back. I don't even know why I said 2019. I feel like it was like the end of 2019, early 2020. But what I'm talking about now was, it's like January, 2020 right he on the phone talking to me extra crazy i'm talking about extra greasy like i'm just a bitch off the street one of his niggas that you did him dirty or something like you know your person like you know who you been with you know your man you know your woman and i knew when he started talking to me a certain way he was in front of somebody so i'm like who the f you in front of talking to me all crazy like this like this ain't you who you trying to impress so he was like man i ain't, I ain't in front of nobody da, 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 da. stop calling my mother phone you over here stalking me breaking into my sh I can't have no privacy, no peace. I'm sticky. you this, that, and the third. I'm like, whatever bitch you trying to show out in front of, I hope it was worth it. Like, I hope you, I hope you get the pussy for trying to show out in front of this girl like that. He like, man, I ain't with no bitch. Da, 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 da. Lying ass, no. Y'all got a flashback, sorry. I was gonna start screaming. So yeah, we just arguing back and forth, back and forth. And then finally, I think, I don't know if he turned, he might've temporarily blocked me, I ain't gonna lie. We had, do we have iPhones? I had an iPhone, he had an Android still. So yeah, I don't know, he could he could have temporarily blocked me and I didn't even know whether or not my messages was going through or not. But eventually I just had to like throw my hands up cause I'm like, damn, he changed his Snapchat password, can't get into his Instagram. So whatever's gonna happen, it's just gonna happen. I gotta wash my hands of the situation. I can't keep stressing myself out about it. Now fast forward to like later that same day, he started texting me all nicey nice on some strange shit. Cause like how we left it off earlier, it's like you wouldn't be texting me like this that quick, you know? So he was like, um, we gotta build our trust back up. You think I'm out here doing this, that, and the third. I'm making, I'm trying to make these moves for us, our family, our future, like our daughter. The whole time he think he easing my mind and calming my nerves. Really, you just up my antennas i'm going crazy i'm trying to check his google location trying to i don't know i think i even tried to did i log into his um i did log into his at&t account to see who he was texting and what phone calls he was picking up but it was like the usual suspects you know what i'm saying i didn't notice anything different at the time and if i was looking for it it would have been right in my face when i think back so Fast forward to when he get back, cause I ain't even find nothing. So I just had to whatever, wash my hands. He was gonna be back in like two days at this point. When, uh, yeah, he came back. Yeah, he wiggled his way back in. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, you can, you can stay. Cause I'm gonna wiggle my ass through that phone. Yeah, as soon as you get home. So he come back being all extra nice, going to the store, buying these big ass jumbo as tiger shrimp when i cooked for him and all that whatever we was drinking a little bit you know get him a little tipsy smoking we also i smoke cigarettes i'm trying to play him like we the best of friends ain't nothing wrong because i needed to eyeball that passcode and i feel like i had got it right so yeah i'm asleep get the phone and boom i'm in we I got so i'm going through that phone bruh i'm telling you i ain't like the 
y'all seen in that phone made everything make sense. I can be a hot head and I can also hold things in and save it for later for when I need it. <sighs> Boy, usually I slap that nigga up out of his sleep. But I'm like, nah, I need to hold this. I need to process this because I cannot believe how much of a liar. It's embarrassing how much you lie. I hold on to this for like at least a day or two for as long as I could. And just by coincidence, he get to act funny again. There was no reason for him to get to act funny, but I'm like, oh, this finna open the door for me to say what I need to say. So I'm like, yeah, you acted funny just like you was acting funny when you flew Sammy out to California. Pause it right here because let me give y'all a backstory on Sammy. I had to go back two years to figure out what I caught this girl because Sammy was just like one of them girls that had me questioning like, is y'all friends or is y'all fucking around? I could never put my finger on it. And to this day, I still can't because remember when I told y'all that my ex accidentally airdropped me a picture? He accidentally airdropped me a picture of bobblehead Sammy. <sighs> y'all, <laughs> let me calm down. That Jim Beam, yeah, me you know what I mean? The video that I talked about Sammy in, I'm gonna link it below so y'all can get a little understanding on who Sammy is and what it was for real. So when I was going through his phone, I found the messages of him and Sammy talking and basically, he was like, yeah, okay, so we finna land at this time. We gonna go up in there. We gonna go to Cali, do this, that, and the third, make some moves. You know, we, we staying at this room, so get you a room. Or you can, you can stay with us, da, da, da. Like, just all kinds of shit. Sammy sent him a picture of her ID. I screenshotted that, sent it to myself. I screenshotted their text threats, sent it to myself. Because you, you got me thoroughly fucked up. And if you try to lie to my face, I'ma just go get my phone and show you what the fuck you on. So I'm like, yeah. You was in Cali with Sammy while you was demeaning me, calling me out my name, calling me a stalker, a miserable bitch, all that shit. You was trying to impress this. Long story short with that, I told him like, listen, I'm gonna move back to the apartment. I'm gonna stay at the apartment on the north side because mind you, I had that apartment for an extra month because I had to pay an extra month on it after my lease was up. I'm like, you can have that apartment on the, on the side of town you want to be on where all your clients hell at because he was trying to drag me by my edges back to that side of town because he was so miserable on the north side. I don't got no clientele. I'm making no money. Nigga, you got a job. And he was like, man, that don't make sense. Like, if you told the lady to cancel, like, the application for the apartment and everything like that, then I'm moving to Cali. I'm serious as fuck. I'm leaving. I'm not wasting no more time in Houston. Too many men. Um, What he said, too many men waste their time stressing over shit and never chasing their dreams and getting to where they want to be at. Then he had the audacity to say, I lied to you because you don't believe me anyway. I could tell you the truth, but you won't believe me. Keep in mind that he had to drive all the way to Dallas for some reason to catch his flight. He claimed that the flight was cheaper in Dallas. But it's like, you about to, what? I think he, did he fly to Dallas? I think he rode the bus to Dallas. I think he rode the Greyhound to Dallas to catch his flight and then flew out from Dallas to California, right? So he like, I didn't fly her out. She flew out separately with my homeboy. His homeboy, we just gonna call him Trey. Let's also keep in mind that Sammy is from Dallas. The math wasn't math to me. When two plus two start equaling, bitch, you sound like a fool. I got an issue. He said they had separate flights back from Cali to Dallas. He said, when we came back, I rode the Greyhound back by myself because the Greyhound do bag checks and we had the tree on us. Basically, not to confuse y'all, Dre got on the Greyhound and paid money while Sammy and Trey drove the tree to Houston, which is quicker and faster and freer. And it just didn't make sense to me. So he was like, I'm so sorry. It's, it's all my fault. It's always all my fault. I can't even imagine you being on the other end of this all the time. I'm sorry, this, that, and the third. He was like, I'm just being honest and I'm letting you know how I feel. It was strictly a money move, nothing but a money move. He kept telling me he would pay the rent, but if I cancel like the application for the apartment, he was like, I'm gonna just wash my hands of it if you cancel. And if we never speak again, I love you and I wish you the best. First of all, your version of events is insane considering I already seen the truth in your phone I already seen the messages the pictures all that I remember telling him like yeah I don't trust you because all you do is lie and now you're trying to insult my intelligence and I was like you doing the most trying to impress her while demeaning me is the shit that I can't respect right so I was like um thank you for paying the rent 
and stuff like that but if you want to move to cali and chase your dreams ain't nothing stopping you we don't talk for a minute and at this time i didn't need to move out because like i said i had an extra money on the apartment on the north side but i did want to move my stuff into the other apartment on the other side of town just so it can, I don't have to worry about it later, right? So he knowing that I'm doing that because I'm texting him like, where's the drill? I'm changing the locks, like da-da-da-da. And he was like, um, a few days after that, he texted me like, you need money for the movers? I can send it to you so you don't have to look at me or talk to me. So I'm like, yeah, you can send that money. I could use the same movers from last time or I could find somebody newer and cheaper. Either way, send the funds. You think he sent the funds? No, my aunts ended up helping me. So... When, and then when he didn't help, I'm like, he just be saying, he's just trying to get my attention. He just saying shit just to say it because there was no point in that. It's the day before the movers coming, right? And he texted me like, did I pack his stuff up and is it ready for him to pick up? And I'm like, yeah. He was like, okay, I'm finna be on the way. When he got close, he ended up calling me like, all right, I'm close. You, did you eat today? And I'm like, no. He was like, what you want? I told him Lotus and get something different for a dollar because she don't eat that. At this point, we had just started bird feeding her. He bought me my Lotus. And then he was like going through like the fridge and everything like that. And he was like, damn, what you been eating in here? Like, you threw, you threw away the food already? Da -da -da. I'm like, nah, I haven't been eating. Because mind you, the whole time I was living paycheck to paycheck. And I had just spent my last check on all the bills. I'm talking about rent, daycare, like the energy bill, the, the lights, phone bill, Wi-Fi. We had so many damn bills that I was paying by myself. So, like, my bank account was draining. And then my last check was going to go to that um like thousand dollar rent that i was gonna have for the, for that extra month once again we had one of them long two to three hour conversations he would go his way back in we talk about how we gonna make it work and fix it and da -da -da -da. he gonna change and the next day the movers come he was with me because he was like yeah i know you don't want to be here by yourself with nala with these in the apartment so i'm gonna just stay we ride together we watch the movers move everything to the other apartment and yeah we was excited i'm not gonna lie it felt real good because at the time that was our like first luxury type of apartment i don't know what it was but i ain't gonna lie it was cool for a minute it was real nice and i even remember um as soon as march came i remember texting him i think it was like the first of march i told him like damn the rona touched down in houston like the cases was skyrocketing damn four days before my daughter's birthday Houston got shut down. It went on lockdown. After that, it was around the time when Houston started like really cracking down and implementing them like COVID laws, you know? It was like, you gotta be in a house by a certain time. You couldn't go to the stores closed super early or some of them just was closed, period. That's when I made that story time about us like in the house, on the tree pen. Like we was on that pen hard, not, not a vape. It was that THC pen. We was on that hard. We were just like, our routine was get up, clean up, watch Netflix, hit the pen all day, all throughout the day, eat, eat like crazy, and then go to sleep. I'm talking about every day. And for a minute, it was cool. Like we binge watch Outer Banks. We binge watch that show. What's that show called? The Ozarks. It was the Ozarks. We would go to Ozarks hard and we would go show after show after show after show every day. I feel like this is when Netflix was elite. But y'all know what a street dude though? They get antsy because they got to be in the streets. So he ended up booking a flight to Cali. He went to Cali so many times. And I'm thinking like that's not going to work because only essential workers can get hotel rooms. Only essential workers can stay in certain places. So I'm like that ain't never going to work. But he had somebody draw him up like a fake email saying that him and his partner Trey was essential workers. And that's how they would get the hotel rooms and stuff. So it ended up working and he went to Cali back and forth at least four times. I remember the last trip he went on while he was living in the house. When he came back, he actually left out again to run an errand. So I started going through his stuff because I want to see like what you bought back. I want to see what's in your wallet and all that. Be yeah, because girls will like write that number down on sticky notes and he was stuffing in his book bag and in his wallet and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna go through your shit. I ended up finding a bunch of blonde hairs. Blonde hairs. At the time, I'm wearing fire red passion twists. The math ain't mapping. So I put the blonde hairs on my brown table and I'm examining them to see if I could see a piece of a follicle. Is this natural? Or is this from a track? Like, what is this? Didn't know. I ended up taking a picture of it and I sent it to him like, yeah, don't bring your ass back here. He was like, man, we ain't even together. So I don't know why you mad, da da da, da. I'm like, bitch, you think you finna come back here and lay up on my furniture while you fucking around? You out your mind. You insane. He was like, man, you you got a nigga on child support. You doing this and I gotta make them payments to da da da, da. But whole time, he was taking his unemployment. I was finna mix it up. 
he was taking his unemployment, paying the child support. And then when I got it, I would give it back to him like a dumb dumb. So I'm like, Nick, you get that money back. It ain't nothing but a measly $200 a month. Please be for real. And me putting him on child support was a another story. That was that was a whole big thing. And I never heard the last of it. I'm surprised I don't hear about it no more. I think he forgot about it, to be honest. That's the only thing that he could bring up and throw in my face. Because I feel like that's the only thing that I ever really did to him was put him on child support. So I'm like, well, your daughter appreciates it. Plus, you get the money back. So let's be for real. So that was that. Go on a little bit. The lockdown get lifted. It's literally May on Mother's Day. And I woke up early thinking, yeah, I'm gonna call my aunt and let her and like check on my grandma because my grandma was in bad shape. But I'm like, nah, it's cool. I'm, I'm gonna be over there today anyway because it's Mother's Day. I gotta go get them flowers and cards and stuff. At 8 a.m., she called me and she told me that my grandma passed away. I was devastated. And mind you, um, I did let my ex come back, okay? And he had my car. He got up early. I don't know what he went to do. Probably get something for his mama for Mother's Day or something. I have no clue. But he had my car. So I had to Uber. I'm like texting him like my grandma just passed away this and the third. And I think he went like he was like, oh, OK, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm doing this and the third. I needed to get over there immediately. I'm devastated. So I ended up calling the Uber and I Uber me and my daughter to my aunt house. And that's a whole nother story. I don't think I even want to talk about it but it just felt so surreal it felt weird it was a whole nother different kind of experience because i had never seen a dead body before and i was in denial up until i actually touched her and hugged her and kissed her i'm like this is how me and my grandma play at any moment she's just gonna be like boo or you know like we played like that i was very much in denial it hurt i don't ever want to feel no hurt like that ever again so let's fast forward to the next time that i kicked him out i feel like this was like the final time we was we was going cool everything was cool but i feel like both of us kind of knew like the chapter was ending for real for real because we had this long talk in the car and he was just like yeah you know this sh i feel like we you know we, sh we should just go our separate ways we can remain cordial for the sake of our daughter for the sake of a co-parenting relationship but you know i just feel like it's coming to an end type thing and he was like i want to move to cali and this that, and the third so i'm like okay yeah i i felt for the longest that this was coming to an end i can't continue to do this like i don't really want to do this no more then that's when he kind of like flipped it on me like i'm the one who initiated the quote-unquote breakup right because i'm agreeing he, he had done that a few times before and usually when he did in the past he would kind of hit me up. he would probably hit me up like a day or two later acting like he didn't just break up with me or in my case when i would be like i'm done we wouldn't talk for like maybe a day or two, maybe even three. It was never too long, but then he would just come around and start talking back to me like the conversation never happened. It almost gave like, yeah, right, bitch, you ain't going nowhere. Then on top of that, I was trying to lead a relationship. I had been kicking him out like every other day. Before this, I probably but kicked him out once. I was legit trying once. to focus on my stuff. I had started doing nails, taking clients. My story times on YouTube was popping off. I feel like he seen me about to level up and he knew this time was going to be different but this time was different because i knew in my mind that i had been mentally done for at least the past three years physically i was content so i wasn't comfortable moving on like i didn't know nothing outside of him for real at least not in my adult life what kept me around for so long was being content it wasn't the love the passion that burned within for him it was being comfortable comfortable with being disrespected crumbs the bare minimum and I, I want it out of that. So yeah, basically I'm agreeing with him and he's trying to flip the script. And I'm like, we both just agreed that we should go our separate ways. It would be for the betterment of both of us. We would do better apart. We literally argued a whole car ride. And at this point we back at the house. And he's like, oh, you, oh, you just want to end it. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm asking you seriously, like, is that what you want to do? You trying to end it like you trying to end things? And I'm like, I thought we just agreed on that. He packing up his shit. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm watching, I'm peeping. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, I'm not finna stop you. I'm not finna, whatever. So he got a little attitude. He was like, yeah, yeah, you think it's funny. You think it's funny. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I'm just like laughing because I'm confused. And he was like, I don't know what you laughing about. Like, what, what is you laughing about? So I'm like, I'm confused on what you talking about. He was like, yeah, you wanna, you wanna be done? I'm just go ahead and get out your hair. I'm gonna get out your way. Let you move on with your little life and da 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 da. So I'm like, okay <laughs> like you know smirking and laughing like it's crazy because i'm not trying to like laugh in his face but i'm just confused and i'm just letting him talk 
And he was like, oh, you think this shit funny? You think this shit funny? You just gonna laugh in my face? You gonna laugh in my face? You telling me you don't wanna be with a nigga and you gonna laugh in my face? And I'm like, I thought it was a mutual decision. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I never said that. That was a mutual decision. And he was like, oh, okay, you just gonna laugh in my face. Like, he kept saying that. And the crazy part is, after we made that mutual decision, which I thought it was a mutual decision, I felt so good. I felt like a... Sh a I felt like so much weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I, I felt light. I just remember him trying to argue. I cannot for the life of me remember exactly what was being said because I just blacked out. And I felt like he wanted to bring my energy down back to his. And I let him. And I felt so disgusted after he left because I blacked out. I don't even know what we was arguing about. It's I could count on both my hands and both my feet how many times I blacked out on him and I just can't remember what the fuck it was about it was almost like an energy shift like he felt like I had the energy he how can I explain this he shifted the energy it's, it was almost like he knew that I had the power and I felt good and light he picked the argument with me and shifted the energy now he had the power now he feeling how I just felt which was like a weight lifted good and light and I could tell by the smirk on his face that he did what he intended to do because when he left the way he was smirking and i just he just looked like he felt so good like yeah bitch yeah now you mad like a week and a half go by right and he randomly texts me i want some pussy. and i ain't gonna lie i wanted some dick so i think i ended up calling him because he wasn't texting back fast enough i want that dick now and when i called him it was like a gang of people in the background and i heard some bitches and I'm like, you know what? I'm not even finna do all this yelling shit. So I'm like, you know, I'm just calling you back. He was like, no, no, what's up? I could be on the way, da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just calling you back. Hold up, don't even worry about it. So after we got off the phone, I'm texting him. And I'm like, where you at? Like, you at a room? He was like, yeah, I'm at, um, ooh, what did I call that boy? <laughs> what did I call that boy? Do y'all remember the story time when I caught my ex sleeping with his neighbor and then me and my friend at the time drove two hours to his school and we caught him with the neighbor. It was the boy that drove the neighbor. It was the homeboy that drove the girl down to the school. He said he was at a room with him because mind you, they still friends and I hate his guts. So I'm like, oh, you had a room with him. Why? And you got bitches in the background. He was like, man, ain't no bitches in the background. That was the TV. That was the Parker's. Now you're trying to insult my intelligence. Cause you don't think I know the Parkers when I hear it. That wasn't Nikki or Kim. That was her, her, and Shim. That was two bitches and a nigga. Like, stop playing with me. <laughs> I know bitches when I hear it. So I'm like, nah, that was girls, that was girls. And let me guess, that was bitch. That must have been pretty girl. Because, because mind you, oh, I said that boy name. I did not mean to say that boy name. I'm like, you think I'm dumb? It was a bitch in the background. Yo ass ain't coming over here. He was like, I'm telling you it was the Parkers on the TV, but have a good one though. He knew how to press my buttons. Act like you don't care. And that would press my buttons so bad. So I called him screaming and he hung up in my face. And then I text him. I'm like, oh, I pull up and I sh that bitch in the head. I feel like I said the most wild shit just to get a response. You know what he said? That's good. Like, I don't know what was wrong with me. I wasn't finna bust not one grape. And mind you, his girl is a bissonette bandit. And if you live in Houston, you know what that is. She's a street walker. So I'm like, oh, okay, so you in a room with prostitutes. That's what we doing. You in a room full of prostitutes and you trying to play, you trying to play with my head acting like I'm crazy. So we get into this big ass blowout and we don't talk for like- We end up not talking for like four or five days. So I remember um this one day I hit him up. I was at my aunt house and I was asking if he was still like at the room with his homeboy because I don't think he wanted to be at his mama house and he ain't had nowhere else to go. So I think that's why he was staying there with him, which is like very weird to me. I don't understand, but whatever. Mind you, the room that his homeboy was staying at was close to where I lived at. So I asked him if he was still over there and he was like, yeah, why? I told him I was just asking and he was like, where are you gonna be at tonight? I'm like, I'm going home tonight. Cause I, I, he knew that I was at my aunt house cause I think he was trying to come see Nyla. But I'm like, I'm not at home. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going home tonight. And um, after I said, yeah, I'm going home tonight. Like, and then I sent a question mark behind it. And he was like, okay, I'm gonna come over. At first I was cool with it. And I'm like, yeah, come on. But then I thought about, it, I'm like, nah, you really don't got to, I'm cool. Cause especially when I know you communicate and entertain other bitches. He ended up sending a voice memo. He made sure it wasn't a peep in the background. Cause you know, I was listening. 
he said the Venmo, a Venmo, <laughs> a voice memo, like, um, nah, what you talk about? I ain't fucking with no other bitches. I'm trying to come over there and da da da. So I'm like, all right, cool. Pull up if you're trying to eat my pussy. And he was like, that's how you feeling? I'm like, uh huh. And he was like, all right, bet. My bad, y'all. I got a phone call. So anyway, yeah, I rush home, shake my pussy, shake my ass. I'm like, just head to toe. You know, you doing that all in one shower when you know you're finna get some D. You haven't had none in a while. So that's what I was doing, right? So I'm just waiting for him to pull up. I had some Hennessy. Hennessy. Y'all, back then it was Hennessy and Crow. I had Hennessy and Crow in the freezer. So I had already been drinking. I'm in the mood and I'm ready. And I just felt like he was taking his sweet time. And I ain't even put on no clothes. I just had the towel on. And because when he came, like, I was just going to have, I was just going to drop the towel. Like, let's, as soon as you walk through the door, let's go. But um, he took so damn long. I'm like, let me go put on a big t-shirt, bitch. A moo moo, something. Because, like, come on now. I'm tired of this. I'm bone dry now. This towel just irritating me at this point, rubbing up against my skin. It's about to get crazy. So he finally came over. I pulled him up some Hennessy. And he go out on a balcony and smoke, right? So he's just like doing all this other stuff. And then after he finished smoking, he go take a shower, which I'm like, cool. Yeah, I want you to take a shower because I don't know how much you've been ripping and running around today. But at the same time, I'm like, you doing all this extra shit. You don't want to put for real like come on hurry up let's go and i say that because he came in we was drinking okay cool you step out on the balcony to smoke but you sitting down in the chair scrolling taking your sweet time smoking for like a good shower 15, minutes boy what what are you doing then you come in and take this long ass shower boy you did your nighttime routine and you was ready to go to bed so he go in the bathroom get out whatever um then he go in my room and i go in the bathroom i don't know what i was doing i think i was like trying to shave the extra little bit because i had hurry up and rushed and shave but you know like it had been at least like 45 minutes so i'm trying to make sure like everything was still cool down there you know i'm doing a little pat pat to mouth then you know pat sniff just to make sure everything's fresh hitting it up with that towel one time you know just to make sure just to make sure <laughs> extra cautious so i'm up in there doing that it didn't even take like five minutes. I come out the bathroom, he up in my room, sleep in the bed. Where's the head? What, what did you even come over here for? I'm like looking crazy as hell because I'm like, damn, you had to be on some crazy shit for you to just knock out like this. I'm like, yeah, at this point you just came over here cause you ain't feel like sleeping in no motel bed. I wasn't even tripping too much. I just get in the bed. I'm like, all right, cool. Cut on the parkers, literally just finna go to bed. It's like one in the morning. His phone get to going off. So I'm like, who is that? His phone go off. Not once, not twice, but like three times. I ain't gonna lie. Three times is too, too many times for me. But in my head, I'm like, nah, we ain't even together. I'm gonna just let it rock. Whatever. But when that hoe go off a fourth time, I said, oh no, I gotta see. I know we ain't together, but baby, mm -mm. So I'm like, nah, I gotta see who this is. Feel for his phone, his phone right next to him. Mind you, he had just bought his new iPhone, matching iPhones. Same phone, same case. The stuff I was seeing, it was like, when I used to check his phone, he definitely used to clear that hoe out because this is what really, this is the type of shit that really used to be in his phone. He was just deleted. I'm talking about he got Tinder on there. What's the other one? The other app that's just like Tinder. I'm going through his Snapchat messages. I'm screenshotting everything and sending it to myself immediately. Screenshot, send, screenshot, send, screenshotting them Tinder messages, all that. The whole time I'm huffing and puffing, mad, heart beating fast, but I'm not thinking of it because um i know he was off some shit so he i'm like he gonna be in a deep sleep ain't no way he waking up so i finally go into them chats i was gonna say chap tap <laughs> them snapchat messages and i do a full deep dive i'm talking about the snapchat messages was worse than the tinder messages tinder was like more so about tree it, it was like him talking to girls and stuff them snapchat messages sent me over the edge i can't lie to you i'm like what the hell all i see is hey daddy what time you want to meet up you want to meet up here i charge this amount cash like all types of shit. i'm like what what i don't know what it was i don't know if i was in disbelief it wasn't clicking to me at first i'm just like reading all this i'm talking about over eight girls over eight girls panty pictures bras all type of different pictures like chest pictures I promise you i couldn't believe it i'm like no no this not who he is like i've never caught i've seen some things but I've never seen nothing like this in his phone. Like, it's not that down bad out here for you to be going and try to pay for some puts. They really in these messages talking numbers like it was a goddamn, I don't even know what. Like, if she would say 60, he'd be like, no, what about 45? What about 50? Like, how are you trying to love all this bitch on her pussy? So, and then another thing, it was insulting because I'm like, I'm right here for free, ready and willing 
just like I hit you up today. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it, I guess it kind of bruised my ego because I'm like, you would rather go pay somebody for some pussy than to come right here. And it wasn't even one person. I'm scrolling through that phone and all I see is two eyes on me. And um, he was like, man, what you doing, bro? Why you up? I'm like, I can't sleep or something like that. But this was before I found a Snapchat message. I was going to let him sleep. I was going to let him stay the night and he could just get up and leave in the morning. Even, um, I had seen the Tinder messages, Instagram messages, even the text messages on his phone wasn't as bad as Snapchat messages. Snapchat has sent me through the, ooh, it sent me through the roof, over the edge. After I seen that, I got up, I started um, pushing him away. I'm like, Dre, Dre, you gotta get up out of here. You gotta get up out of here, you gotta bounce. He doing that sleepy shit. What, what, what you doing, why, why? I'm like, nah, you gotta get up out of here. You trying to pay for pussy, you on Tinder, you been on Tinder, these messages old as fuck. You gotta bounce. He was like, man, what, what, what? That's when he fully started waking up. He like, man, what? What you trying to set me up? You trying to set me up? He getting up off the bed, grabbing his shirt, all disheveled. He looking around like, you trying to set me the fuck up, bitch? Fuck you. You trying to set me up? I'm like, what the f No, 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 no. I'm not trying to set you up. You're paying for pussy and I found out. It's not a setup. Not, nothing set up you about it, okay? I was like, no, I dead ass was confused. I'm like, wait, what did you tell? No, 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 no. Pause. No. I'm, I'm like, what you talking about? Ain't nobody trying to set you up. You're, you, you around here paying for pussy. See, that's my whole problem he like nah nah you trying to set me up you hit me up acting like you want me to come over here and eat your pussy i get here you acting weird now you wake me up with this shit bitch you trying to set me up you trying to set me up i'm like no that don't even make sense do you hear yourself nobody's trying to set you up you're talking to hold on you're i got i'm like it's right here it's right here on the phone because mind you i screenshotted shit and sent it to myself i got all the proof in the pudding it is what it is. I don't know what you talk about right now. I didn't even care what he was talking about at first because at this point at, in my head, I'm thinking you're just trying to flip the script. And so he just kept saying it, kept saying it. And I'm like, oh, he really believed this. He really believed that I'm trying to set him up. What would be the point in me trying to set you up? And then set you up for what? It's not like you got the whole 30K. And at this point, if um anybody thinking like, oh, didn't you say he won over 30K? He don't even got that no more. Because mind you, he got open cases. He had to pay for his lawyer. Then he had to pay for his brother a lawyer. So that's like 15 down the drain. Then he got his mama some, he paying my bills. And then I'm not trying to be funny, he had a slight gambling problem. He just like doing a whole bunch of crazy shit with his money, that 30K went like this. And then it's like, keep in mind, this, this was around when everybody was doing that unemployment, PPPs. It's like setting you up, not even logical right now. Everybody getting money so many different ways that setting you up, it just wouldn't even, what? Even if you did have that money. Everybody tricking off the government. The government really throwing it right now. I'm like, what are you talking about? Nobody trying to set you up. You sound stupid. Like, I don't even understand what you're talking about. You're paying for pussy, and that's why you got to get up out of here. So he was like, nah, bitch, you trying to set me up. You trying to set me up. So mind you, at this point, we argue all the way into the kitchen, from the room to the kitchen. So I'm like, you disgust me. You pathetic. And I ain't going to lie, I was purposely trying to antagonize him, because why is you doing all this? Like, oh, you trying to set me up, like trying to deflect type of stuff. And there was this door, like there's the coat closet and then there's the door with the water heater, the water heater in it that stay locked. He pushed me up against that door and he grabbed the hell out, like he grabbed the shit out of my face. And he was like, bitch, I'll break your fucking jaw trying to set me up, da da da. Mind you, his, he grabbing, I can't even talk. He holding my jaw so tight, his forehead on my forehead. He's spitting in my face. Bitch, I'll break your fucking jaw. I wanted to say like, let me go. I can't talk. He kind of got me jacked up. It hurt like my jaw is hurting. Like it felt like he wanted to rip my shit off. He's just screaming in my face, telling me he hate me. I'm a grimy bitch. I'm trying to set him up. This, that, and the third. I can't even talk. I can't even defend myself. Like I'm not trying to set you up. Like nobody is here. How am I trying to set you up? I'm confused. I can't say nothing because of how hard he grabbing my jaw. So I just started hitting him. I started hitting him and pulling his hair. Then he finally let me go. And then the the only way that I knew that he kind of had me jacked up is when he let me go, my feet touched the ground. I was like, this nigga had me in the air? In the air is crazy. So I started pulling his hair and he was like, he said something like, bitch, hit me again, hit me again, I'm gonna break your fucking jaw. He just kept threatening to um, break my jaw. So I'm like, do it, I wish you would. I'll call the police, da da da. Yeah, you police ass bitch, you police ass bitch. I knew you was a police ass bitch, da 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 da. Of course I'm gonna call the police. The crazy part is I was saying it, but I never actually called the police on him. As many times as we got into it, like other people would call the police. 
That's how the police will come out. I didn't call the police because I felt like I wasn't innocent either. So what I'm calling the police for, we up in here hitting on each other. The only reason I was shocked at this point is because we hadn't like put hands on each other in so long and we was done. So I didn't think it would get to this level. But this time, like when he kept threatening to break my jaw, I'm like, he really just might do it. The way he had a grip on my jaw, I'm like, he gonna pull, like he gonna rip my shit out. He gonna do something. So when he finally let my jaw go, he like, don't ever call my fucking phone again. I'm blocking you. You trying to set me up, this, that, and the third. Mind you, while he's saying all this, he grabbing all his stuff from around my house and he leaving. So now I'm following him into the hallway. Wait, hold on. Before I follow him in the hallway, I'm hurry up trying to grab my keys because I don't care how crazy the situation is. I'm gonna lock my door when I know I'm leaving. So I hurry up and grab my keys and I close my door and lock it. And now we having a screaming match in the hallway. In the quiet ass hall, it's closer to two o'clock in the morning. And I'm following him all the way downstairs to the first floor from the third. So I'm like, what are you talking about? How am I trying to set you up? There's not even nobody else here. I don't understand. Like I caught you talking to prostitutes. I caught you with your Tinder account. You been had a Tinder and the message is old as hell. Mind you, this not even the first time I caught Tinder on his phone, but he swore the Tinder account was to grow his tree business. He was a tree page. Basically, he would just claim that the Tinder account was to find new clientele. Ain't that a paper trail for the police? Like, can somebody screenshot this and send it to the police? You moving dumb as hell. Ain't no way that's for, um, that's for your business. Ain't no way that's for tree. Now we down to the first floor having this huge ass screw, man. She was like, now nah, you trying to set me up. You trying to set me up. And I was just so confused. So now I'm just actively trying to explain to him, like, I'm not trying to set you up. There's nobody else here. Like, why would I set you up? Why would I do that to you? When people get set up, they life usually ends. Why would I do that to you? He was like, nah, you a grimy ass bitch. Grimy, grimy, grimy. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? At one point, I was just like, okay, whatever. He was like, um, I was like, um, I was like, I don't, I don't even know where you're going. You ain't got no car. He was like, bitch, I'm gonna call the Uber. Fuck you, bitch. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, broke ass, broke ass with you and that scooty bike. Cause at this time he was riding, um, you know, Ray J with them scooty bikes. He was riding that all around the city of Houston. He ain't had no car. He was riding a scooty bike or sometimes he would take his mama car. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you and that scooty bag. I was just trying to play him. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You call a nigga over here, though. You call me and my scooty bag over here. Talking about, eat your pussy. So I'm like, oh, shit, you got a point. I'm just yelling, 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 trying to run after him. He slammed that gate. And I was like, yeah, I'm not walking no more because it's dark as hell out there. I'm not doing it. I was so confused in the moment. I'm thinking, why is he thinking I'm trying to set him up? Like, nothing about this game set up at all. You know you came over here higher than a kite and you fell asleep before you got active like you just wanted a bed to sleep in that night when i went to bed i was really just trying to process stuff i did not sleep good at all it was too much it was too much it was ugh. so two whole days go by we arguing about it for two days then like on the third day he was like i'm gonna come pick up my shit i'm like okay every time he come pick up this stuff he always seemed to try to wiggle his way back in so i'm like you can come pick up your stuff but you're not welcome back here because mind you i had been packed his stuff up his stuff had been packed up for so long just sitting in the corner so yeah you can come pick it up but you ain't welcome here this this was my last straw and i i swear to god because you actively for one my biggest problem was you disrespect me in front of my daughter the toots they sent me over the edge i couldn't i couldn't because knowing that you possibly would be fucking on a, a toot and then coming back here every now and then is crazy the list was long but i had reached my breaking point and they say when you done you will know and I was done. That was it. That was my limit. He came to get his stuff. Mind you, it was a lot of stuff in the apartment, but most of it was books from college. It was like them college books. Because it wasn't clothes and stuff, or maybe a pair of work boots, some work clothes and stuff, like from his old jobs. It's like, boy, come get this little bitty shit and get the fuck up out of here. He took an hour, y'all, over an hour to get this little bitty shit. I'm talking about taking one thing at a time, going to walk into the car, come get two more things, walk into the car. Like, boy. <laughs> so he pulled up his mama car. You know what? I scratched that because I didn't even know he had his mama car at the time. So he pulled up, right? And he come get his stuff, walking into the car one by one. Like I said, we're talking shit on the way in and out. Like, yeah, you gonna have how the other nigga, how the state of Texas pay your rent? Because I ain't doing this shit. I ain't paying. You gonna have another nigga laying up here. How that nigga pay the rent? And da 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 Just going off. I'm like, okay. Okay. You gonna pay this rent because me and your daughter live here. You convinced us to move here. Put my name on this lease. You're gonna pay this rent. Like, you didn't have a choice. So he was like, I ain't paying shit. I ain't paying shit, da, da, da. So I'm like, okay. So then I started guilt tripping his ass because you gonna pay this rent. I need to stack my unemployment and <laughs> I'm not paying the rent. So I'm like, oh, okay. So you you have me sign this lease and you wanna fuck my credit up? Like, oh, that's what you doing? Oh, okay, thanks, thanks for that. Like, you know, 
definitely actively trying to guilt trip him and i ain't give a fuck because you're paying this rent oh pause i take that back before he started talking about that shit the first thing he walked in on is and, and didn't want prostitutes that was my clientele which he had been saying for the last two days but i guess he wanted to drill it in my head like he came in mad huffing and puffing he was also saying stuff like you think i'm stupid you don't think i know half of them pages is bought today and the other half is potential customers like why would i be paying for anything i ain't even prostitute them with clientele that's clientele i don't i ain't paying for shit they paying me they paying me. You think I'm think I'm stupid? You think I'm dumb? Yes. Who more desperate enough to pay for the shit? You. When it's free pussy everywhere. Who gonna pay for it? I ain't no desperate, lame, ugly ass nigga. I ain't gotta pay for it. You two out of the three. Now, I ain't gonna tell you which two you is, but you two out of the three. So, he was getting even more mad because I'm kind of laughing at him. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Get your shit and beat it. Like, come on now. Oh, he was like, yeah, 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 my ass, bitch. Good luck paying this rent because I ain't paying it. Finna be fucking on other up in here and da-da-da-da. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? So, mind you, I got like a chair holding, o holding the door open. And he walking back and forth. No, 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 it ain't a chair. It wasn't a chair. It was that stick. You know that stick you put in front of your door so people can't kick it in from Home Depot? It was one of them holding the door open so he could walk in and out. And the last thing I remember is like, I'm in the kitchen. Like, I'm walking this way. The front door is like right here, right? So I'm walking and I just see his head peeking because he had took his last thing. He was like, hey, good luck paying for the rent, bitch. And then he like darted <laughs> darted off like is she trying to run so he darted off and started speed walking like mobbing through the hallway like down to the uh down to the flow so i go down there and i'm like good luck packing all that shit on your scooty bike bitch <laughs> so it was like yeah y'all in my mama car you think you know everything that's your problem that's your problem i'm in my mama car you might want to quiet the fuck down that's not a flex you up here yelling to the whole apartments that you in your mama car and not on your scooty bike today calm down so I was just like, oh, this is embarrassing. Tatiana, take your ass back in the car. I mean, in the house, because this is crazy. He was like, yeah, yeah, good luck paying rent. I'm like, yeah. When I'm walking back down the hall, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have a different nigga in here every day. Every day. Fucking on a different nigga every day. And he was like, yeah. And they're going to pay for it, too. Then, like, whatever. We just going back and forth. The final thing I yelled was, have fun bouncing on that scooty bike. That scooty bike, yo ass gonna tip over. <laughs> Even though he just told me he was in his mama car. I ain't care. I wanted to embarrass his ass. <laughs> it's more. It's more. Because he found out that I was making videos about him. And then that set him over the edge. I actually put that on my membership. I put the video um in the voice memos. I forgot what I called it. So I can't find it. But I did add all the voice memos when he was cussing me out. Like to the core. To the bottom of his heart. So it was, it's a lot more. But um, leave this one right here. So if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. Anything in the comments, leave a chicken, you know it's our thing. Make sure you are subscribed. And I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Bye. Scooty bike, scooty bike. Now you want to fight, you want to fight. Because you want to scooty bike, scooty bike. <laughs> y'all got so many scooty bikes. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. And then it was like, at one point, the scooty bike was a family heirloom. Because all of a sudden, not a brother Devante on the scooty bike. He done bought it from my ex. He bought it from Dre. Now Devontae scooting on the bike. I'm like, y'all really love this scooty bike, huh? Basically, he get bitches, so he don't need to pay for it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> out of the 17 girls you be DMing, maybe two respond, and one was out of pity. <laughs> so, like, let's be for real. I'm not gonna lie. I was very delusional because I would see him actively, um, like, DMing people, like, girls and stuff. And it was not responding. I'm like, oh, nobody want this man but me. But, like, why are you still doing that like you know what i'm saying no <laughs> i ain't know what to say i swear to god i ain't know what to say make that hour plus ride how long did it take you it took you over a year to hit so it's like and then it's like when they losing and shit when they lose money the attitudes it's like being addicted to drugs like the mood swings the attitudes and all that shit like it's crazy when he won that money i i refuse to believe it until the money hit the account we was even finna take a trip and everything to louisiana to go like gamble at casinos and shit but that's a whole nother story i think i told that story i don't know y'all take, take a shot mm -hmm. take a shot <laughs> please don't piss me off right now please 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 don't piss me off bitch take a shot. oh that burn <laughs> fuck ass jim beams <laughs> y'all got these free shots for the liquor store don't look like a jim beam bitch <laughs> Why would you give me Jim Beam and then it's honey so it tastes like sugar shot? It tastes like a sugar shot. Ain't nothing but sugar in this shot. I don't want that. I'll drink it. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I'm grateful, but I don't want that.
Ho! <laughs> that shit do got me giggly. Y'all, I don't know if y'all got the upshaws on in the background. I hope y'all can't hear that. I like the upshaws. That's my new comfort show. I'm gonna add it in to the Parkers and Girlfriends, the upshaws. And I added in the Hugelies too. The Hugelies? The Hugelies. The Hugelies. The Hugelies. It don't sound right. The Hugelies? It don't sound right. Yeah, let's just dead this shit right here and now. She wouldn't have did times 10 if that was just a friend. I don't trust a word that come out your mouth like you told your drawers a long time ago. Don't it? Don't the Greyhound take substantially longer than driving? He wasn't playing with his money. He was dishing his money out like, you get some, you get some. Everybody gets some. That nigga thought he was Oprah. More like no, bro. So, <laughs> I knew if I stayed with him, it would cause her deep damage to the point where she would grow up and repeat my patterns. And I'm like, no. I can't have that. She gonna do better because I'm gonna teach her to do better. At this point, I have started doing story times about him. I'm like, I can't even talk shit like I want to just because I got this little piece of loyalty. Like, I'll never tell your business business because it's a lot of shit that I left out of them old story times. But it's like, I can't even say what I really want to say because we so-called doing this back and forth shit because I don't even want to say we was together, bitch. Let it burn deep down, you know it's bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm done, this shit can burn, it could go to hell. Cause I will never be here again, that bail you out of jail. After I packed up all his shit, we don't talk for like four, five days. I'm on Instagram scrolling and I see this girl. It was the girl that he used to call his baby mama from when he lived in Atlanta. And mind you, I had befriended this girl because I kept seeing them talking, right? It's a long story, I already made a story time on it. So I befriended her ass and I had her on social media and we used to talk every now and then. And she posts this, um story on her instagram and it was her and the caption was like still mine and they still mad but he she had the like zipper emoji over the face of the dude but the dude was like brown skin he had dreads and he had these tommy hill figure boxes on and she was in the past like they was in a car and she was clearly in like in the passenger seat right and i'm like bitch hold the fuck up my nigga got them draws my man Lil dre dre Lil jaquavius he got them same draws. This ain't no coincidence. Hold the phones. I ended up texting him. And I'm like, you still got them Tommy Hilfiger draws? Like, out of nowhere. Because we ain't talked in a minute. Well, I don't even know if we cool. Like, well, I don't even know if we cool. But I'm like, you still got them Tommy Hilfiger draws? And he was like, yeah, why? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, of course you do. Because this you, huh? And I sent him the picture. And he was like, man, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I was like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. He was like, nah, you tripping. This your imagination taking over. Like, you need some help. Da, 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 da. I'm like, boy, this is you. Same complexion, same dress, same drawers, same arm. That's your arm. He like, man, I don't know what you talking about. That nigga way bigger than me. Like, that's not me. I been off shorty ass. She ain't like that bullshit I was on. Da, 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 da. He was like, nah, she, she won't talk to me. She won't talk to me. I'm like, it sound like you care that she not talking to you. Nah, it sound like y'all still talking. It sound like y'all still talking. So he was describing to me to his underwear. He was like, my drawers is navy blue with red and white accents. His drawers is white with red and blue accents. Like, that's a whole difference. Not the same drawers. Da, da, da. I'm like, what a coincidence that y'all both got um, Tommy drawers. That ain't no, that ain't no coincidence. That's you. So I text him like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Send the other pair. Send the draws. Send the draws so I can see him. So he send the draws. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Where that other pair? Where that other pair of draws? Mind you, it wasn't no other pair of draws. But in my delusional head, I'm like, if I say where the other pair of draws, he gonna think that I know about the other pair of draws and just send it because I know he got two pairs because I'm sure, I'm one thou wild percent sure that this is him in this picture, right? And I might post the picture, <laughs> but I will have to crop her face out too. He was like, you think I'm the only nigga, uh, you think I'm the only nigga with dreads in Atlanta? And I'm like, you might not be the only nigga with dreads in Atlanta, but you the only one with them Tommy draws, that arm and that dread length. He just kept saying, you want me to say that it's me, but it's not. It's not. If it was me, I would have been told you that it was me because I'm tired of doing this back and forth. And I was like, nigga, that's your arm. I know that arm from anywhere. That's you. That's you. Now send the draws. Or I'll bust your ass wall to wall. <laughs> I ain't say that. I ain't say that. So we end up not talking for a while. I'm talking about maybe another five days go by. 